Video game music is some of the most underrated music ever, in my opinion. Some of my favorite tracks ever across all mediums straight up come from video games. Just the amount of work that composers put into video game music uh, cannot be overstated. And I do think video game tracks are garnering more and more recognition, especially as companies start posting them up on websites like Spotify where they're easily accessible. Sega has their own sound team page where they focus on basically tracks across their titles Sega published titles. You've got Capcom with their page as well. And Square Enix, which will be the main topic of this video, also has their Spotify page where they have tracks across all these different franchises, Nier, Final Fantasy, you name it. Now, there are other companies who are more resistant to posting their music online or making them easily accessible. And I don't think it should be much of a surprise that Nintendo will come up in this area. A company that has an incredible history of video game music spanning decades. Nintendo is just resistant to making those easy accessible via streaming or hell making them easy to buy in some way for that matter and recently this has come up after Square Enix proved to lead the charge in being a good example of how to make their epic music accessible Square Enix also has a long history of incredible music and now it's more accessible than ever as Square Enix decided to launch their own YouTube music channel where they added 5,500 tracks to YouTube music YouTube is another very big landscape for music listeners. I myself tend to use YouTube for a quick search of a specific track and tend to listen to music there, but a lot of those uploads tend to be from unofficial sources, and so they may someday get taken down, which did happen when it comes to Nintendo tracks. Recently, I'll get to that story in a bit, but from time to time, you'll see some companies upload their own official tracks on their own official YouTube channel, and you know those are going to be there up for a while or indefinitely for that matter. And meanwhile, those companies get to maybe make some ad revenue off of it. It's a win-win situation, and Square Enix seems to have acknowledged this with their YouTube endeavor. More than 5,500 of the publisher's tracks are now available for YouTube music for users to listen to. Square Enix seems to have come to the realization that there is value in officially adding the tracks to YouTube and having that all centralized instead of kind of scattered about from all these unofficial sources. And if you go to their page, you will see that the additions in include over 60 albums, including tracks for the likes of Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Chrono Trigger, and Nier Automata. And I can show you this myself on their official YouTube music page. It looks something like this. Scrolling down, you can see their songs, or you can see their albums, and clicking on albums, you'll find just how many albums they have uploaded across various Final Fantasy franchises, across various other franchises like Nier and the like, Chrono Trigger, you name it. And while I cannot promise you that this is every single track ever that you're looking for from Square Enix, 5,500 tracks is still substantial and you'll definitely find a lot to like here, no doubt. Video Games Chronicle also highlighted how more albums can be found under their composer's name, so you can sort by Nobuo Ematsu, for example, if you so desire. As well as this, Square Enix has launched a new YouTube channel called Square Enix Music. This contains playlist links to all its albums to make finding them easier, and that's what this looks like. You can go to the Square Enix Music channel and you'll find some uploads here and there that are not necessarily relevant to the tracks, but if you scroll down, you'll find albums that have been well distributed and well organized Final Fantasy series and the albums surrounding that series. The Saga series, the Mana series, the Chrono series, the Nier series. I mean, this is really good stuff. So beyond the fact that all this music is centralized, the way they're making it user-friendly is going to inspire people to check this channel out and to check out some badass music. Now, that YouTube channel is going to get additional content surrounding composers, for example. It also promises to include new bespoke videos based on its music, including interviews with composers. So beyond being a one-shop stop for Square Enix music to stream and listen to Square Enix music, you might occasionally get extra content to give you insight about that music. Like, this is a really cool way to put the spotlight on their music and to get the music listeners community engaged with the tracks from this company that has such a long history and whose music have captivated so many. I mean, they even have custom playlists for different moods. Like, if you want a chill, study, and work kind of mood, there is a mix for that. If you want a game music to hype you up kind of mood, there is a mix and playlist for that. Like, 
Like, they've gone all out. And this is, I think, an endeavor that many other companies should pursue to really put the limelight on their awesome music. I hope that this, what Square Enix is doing here, becomes a trend. Make that music as accessible as possible, centralize it, and everyone gets to benefit from that on some level, especially if you pull it off like Square Enix is doing, where they're not just centralizing music, they're making it convenient to listen to, sort through, find music. As Video Games Chronicle points out here, this not only provides fans of Square Enix a place to listen to all of its music for free, but also prevents other users from uploading and monetizing the music themselves. Square Enix can do that on an official capacity. Again, it's win-win. Now, Video Games Chronicle aptly brings up Nintendo and their lack of foresight on this front, their lack of foresight on the value of their music and how much everyone could benefit from Nintendo just kind of putting that out there on their on some kind of official channel for Nintendo music and making that easily accessible, allowing people to stream it. Plenty of outlets who cover this story brought up Nintendo on some level. So here is GameSpot's coverage. For example, Square Enix launches a YouTube music channel that has over 5 1,500 tracks. And then down here, you'll find a quote, Nintendo is one such brand that fans have called on to release its video game soundtracks online, but the company has been in the news for aggressively protecting its intellectual property, for overdoing it, overboard to the point where there aren't allowing the community to enjoy their fandom of Nintendo games or to just find an easy way to enjoy their work, like their music and their soundtracks. All of that music is kind of scattered around through unofficial channels who have uploaded the tracks. And even in scenarios like that, Nintendo has gone out of their way to take down certain channels like this YouTuber who received 4,000 copyright strikes had to close their channel because all they did was essentially upload Nintendo music. And look, I'm not saying Nintendo doesn't have the right to do this. It is their music. And if somebody else is uploading that on their channel and hell, especially monetizing it, then uh, you know, it, it's not unsurprising that this has happened, but Nintendo also hasn't provided a solution for people who are seeking to easily stream music online, Nintendo music online, or how to even find some way to buy them. Uh, Nintendo has made that very difficult, and it's only in Japan, from what I hear, where music is somewhat available for purchase. But in other regions, it's just very hard to, on an official capacity, be able to find and listen to just an epic history of soundtracks. But yeah, YouTube user who claims to have received around 4,000 copyright strikes from Nintendo for uploading video game soundtracks has announced that they're ending their channel. That user said, after thinking about this a lot over the past few days, I've decided that at this point, it's really not worth it to keep the channel up any longer. I mean, if he keeps uploading tracks, they're just gonna get copyright struck anyway. Yeah, I, I get the sentiment. And will therefore delete the Gilva Sunner uh, YouTube channel or what's left on it this coming Friday. There are many different opinions over what is happening and it's fine I can understand pretty much all sides I know this is disappointing to read for a lot of you but I hope you can respect my decision to want to move on at this point point. and in this article it was highlighted how Nintendo does not typically release its soundtracks on music services leading many to call on the publisher to do so and it's not just media coverage that has been insistent about this if you look at social media for example and look at the responses to people who have gotten the news that Square Enix is launching their own YouTube channel for music with already 5,500 tracks added to it. How many times does Nintendo come up here? Quite a bit. Imagine if Nintendo did this. Scrolling further down, more companies seriously need to do this. Cuff, Nintendo, great move by Square. Scrolling further down, we've got about time. Now, if only Nintendo would follow Square's lead and put their OSTs up on YouTube. But yeah, you get the idea. Nintendo comes up often in these conversations because it just feels like Nintendo's being resistant to an idea where everyone would benefit on some level and that is doing a disservice to the spotlight that their music deserves because Nintendo music is so freaking awesome. So let it shine. Let it be streamed. Let people just like vibe to it whenever they feel like it in a convenient way. Like how Square Enix is providing as many options as possible. Spotify, YouTube Music, and their official YouTube channel based on their music, which has everything well organized and linked. And this has been a Nintendo trend for a while where they go out of their way to undo a convenience that the community provides where Nintendo fails to fill that void. It's kind of why Nintendo is lambasted for how hard they go on emulation and ROMs when they pull crap like this, where they discontinue the shops of Wii U and Nintendo 
3DS without providing alternatives to preserve those games. And yeah, Nintendo was asked if they're going to preserve these games. And aside from their infrequent uploads to Switch Online classic games, they've said that there are no plans to offer classic content in other ways. And so what that means is that across the board, when it comes to shutting down these two stores, up to a thousand digital only games will essentially disappear forever and would have been gone forever had it not been for ROMs preserving these titles and emulators allowing you to play these titles. And now with Nintendo's music, they're removing ways for people to conveniently be able to listen to their music by shutting down unofficial sources. And at the same time, they're not providing their own official source for convenient listening of Nintendo soundtracks. And that's why there's such a celebration now surrounding what Square Enix is doing with their YouTube channels, because people hope that this kickstart something that other companies will look at this see the positive reception and see that this is something people want and they'll go okay maybe we can lean in this direction as well and many people are especially hoping for nintendo to go in this direction because they have some of people's favorite tracks ever across their history of music and it'd be a shame for that to remain not easily accessible because nintendo's stubborn about this kind of thing. Nintendo's just overly aggressive with how much they protect their IPs and their licenses. How recently I covered a story where Nintendo blocked videos that showed how to emulate games on Steam Deck. Mind you, this user was at no point encouraging piracy, was at no point showing how to download the ROMs, just showing the basic act of emulating, which in itself isn't illegal, isn't illicit. Nintendo's just always been like really shitty about stuff like this, about preservation and about how they treat their community and how overly seriously they take certain things. And then when it comes to music, they've been going on a takedown spree as well. And now Square Enix kind of doing the complete opposite by launching their own official way to have their music hosted on YouTube where everyone gets a benefit, like hopefully Nintendo can take cues from that. But this is Nintendo we're talking about. As amazing as their games are, they're among the most stubborn companies, among the most short-sighted companies, in my opinion. But who knows? Maybe what Square Enix is doing here will be the start of something, the start of a trend. Because right now we're looking at a Square Enix does what Nintendo don't kind of situation, and we want Nintendo don't to turn into a Nintendo do. Please, Nintendo, do it. Come on, make it easy for people to be able to listen to your music and celebrate it. But that's just one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on these developments surrounding Square Enix uploading their music to YouTube and the discourse that that's causing about Nintendo's much more narrow-minded approach to this. Share your thoughts in the comments below and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.